this video, Pornima Vijayshankar, the founder of Femgineer, interviews Alex Kazakoff, the CTO of Glownet. As you watch the video, you'll learn how Alex has leveraged public speaking throughout the course of his career. You'll also learn why Alex decided to take Femgineer's Confident Communicator course in 2015, even though he had already given a number of talks. Finally, Alex will explain how the course improved his presentation and technical leadership skills. So thank you so much for doing this, Alex. I wanted to start off by just getting to know a little bit about your background. Um, what's your current role and where are you at? Right. So, well, I'm a CTO of Glownet right now. Glownet is a company three and a half, four years old. Um, it's a UK business, but we operate locally and we service large events at 60,000 people parties with lots of music, camping and different things. So um, we have been going pretty good. I'm one of the co-founders of the company. I've been there since uh, we have been just four people in the beginning, four or five people. Uh, we have now grown to be 25. We have done 90 events in 17 different countries. And since then, we've entered the United States market and um, did, did pilots in other spaces like exhibitions and, you know, clubs and other things. So um, what we do, what my daily job is, I run all the product development. So I have a team of uh, eight engineers, a product manager, a part-time designer, uh, and we're working on the software, um, which we run on our own hardware, which we provide to live events. Our product allows live events to become cashless and to use the power of RFID wristbands. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, let me just get one and I actually show you how it looks sure. like. So we use the power of this sort of devices. This one okay. is for Spotify. Spotify was one of our clients uh, oh. a year ago. And we put them on the guests and that becomes their only way to pay and access different areas and as well identifies the person with their social media account in case they want to post some pictures or videos using the totems on site. And we have been doing that uh, as a full service, so we bring a few people who are experienced in events. We bring uh, the devices in suitcases, we roll it out, we teach everyone train, um, help manage the process, and our software works on the Android devices and in the cloud, allowing this whole thing to happen. So basically, we deliver a banking solution um, within the environment where uh, each employee uh, gets training of five minutes, processes you know hundreds of thousands of dollars of transactions a day um, in the mud, in the lack of electricity, and it works <laughs> completely no networks. Um, so quite a challenging kind of problem, wow. and, and we've been tackling quite successfully so far. That's awesome. And prior to being the CTO here, what was, your, what was your role before that? I mean, had you managed teams before or was this all new to you? It was quite new to me. Mm -hmm. um, I have a background of engineering and mathematics. I come from Russia myself. Mm -hmm. And um, before, in, in the early beginning of my career, I worked as a software developer. And it pretty early became obvious that I'm quite passionate about the product aspects of things, mm -hmm. understanding you know, how the people will use it and what actions and activities should be most simple, most fast, most easy uh, to do and just looking at it through their eyes. Um, and since then, I've ta taught some kids, some school students um, um, how to develop software and they have done amazing projects. One of them won actually the All Russia competition and oh, wow. work. I'm so inspired. Like the day he returned, um, he was a completely different person. And <laughs> he was confident. He was engaged. He was brainstorming new ideas. And uh, right now, he's you know completing his studies very successfully. He's already um, you know in university, finishing his university now. So. That all that inspired me to be, you know, a leader and a coach and a, and a trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, it allowed me to see that most of things that didn't work out and projects that were unsuccessful um, did not became this way uh, because <laughs> of, you know, mathematics or uh, computer programs were not sophisticated enough. Right? Mm -hmm. It was about, you know, people didn't talk to people. There was mm -hmm. disagreement. No understanding of the business side of things. 
Yes. So you didn't really have any prior communication experience, but you discovered that most of the problems between teams and product development came down to how people communicated. And then you decided to participate in these business plan competitions. But, um, but all this time you were just sort of winging it, right? You hadn't actually gotten any formal training. So it seems like you were doing a pretty good job. You were training um, students, you were winning business plan competitions. Like what even made you want to come and, you know, start uh, with our course, the Confident Communicator course? Now that's an excellent question. Personally, for me, there were um, probably two main reasons, right? One is I have a passion for uh, human technology. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is designing applications that we use in our daily life uh, from the point of impacting us and helping us make wiser choices uh, emotionally um, in terms of our life and so on. Because in many, many cases, we already want to do the thing that would be great for us, but we don't do it. Mm -hmm. And there are great people in the space like Dan Ariely or BJ Fogg who are working on the science and the psychology behind it of how do we nudge a little bit people to, or like just structure their mm -hmm. experience with whatever they're using, their calendar, their uh, task list, their alarm clock, whatever application they use on a daily basis, how do we push them a little bit to be more mindful, more strategic, and so on. Right, and these guys are experts, so people listen to them, and they are at big institutions like Stanford and Duke, yeah. Exactly, so that got me, I like, that is a big passion of mine. Uh -huh. I wanted to share that and actually talk to people about my own developments and my own ideas and my own um, things that I saw in existing products that were done very well from this standpoint or done poorly uh, and could be improved significantly. So, um, and I, I wanted to gain this confidence to, to pitch my thinking, pitch my ideas to mm. people professionally uh, in the software world and, and the business world um, so that I get, can get access and, and present these ideas to those who lead in this space and actually get involved. So that was the number one reason. Yeah. So you, you'd already been speaking, but now you wanted to take it to another level. You wanted to pitch your ideas. You wanted for people to understand that you were an expert in this field as well and to give you more opportunities. So, and, and yeah. In the process is mm -hmm. that um, while I was pretty good in like one-on-one -on -one or mm. a big room presentation, which I prepared carefully and there was a structure and there was a point, um, uh, in a short conversation where I wanted uh, you know, to pitch an idea or pitch uh, um, myself as an expert in this field or as a person you know, who can really contribute and, and give value and would want to be involved in this field, um, I was not very successful because I would you know, go from different directions and I didn't have any prepared structure to talk about this as well as um, I was kind of you know, walk, will walk around in my conversation and and then the time will you know, finish up or, or the person will get bored and, or I myself would not open up and, and then things would not work out. What were some of the things that you took away from the course? Right, so um, there are several things that I clearly remember from the course. So mm -hmm. um, one is um, the course really helped me out to um, put together a, a sort of step-by-step um, -step plan of how to prepare a speech. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do I, uh, you know, identify what an area I'll be speaking about? How do I identify clearly who my audience is, what they know, what they don't know? How do I connect with them? And so that, you know, my speech is more of a conversational nature rather than, you know, a lecture. Yeah. And, but you'd already been speaking before. So were these things new to you? Um, yeah, because, you know, what I, um, what I kind of saw, um, actually, let me kind of run forward a little oh. bit now yeah. that, and I have done the course, and um, um, just recently, about a month ago, I was the keynote speaker at the um, beginning of the new class uh, for 170 business school students wow. from 20 countries in the world. That's awesome. Speaking to them about you know what the business school will give to them, and 
what I learned myself and what I wished I had done differently mm -hmm. when I um, studied at IE, um, so that allowed them to have a great experience and take their career to the next level. And watching the recording of, of the speech, I, I really noticed that I was very comfortable just <laughs> walking around the um, stage mm -hmm. and also even asking them to do things like, hey, you know, look, look at the right and, and like look at the left. And, and in the beginning, people are like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, yeah, yeah, like just do that. And then like, oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're meaning. Um, and they, they, they did the things that I asked them to do. And, and I sort of really connected with them and it, it was very conversational. Um, so that's something I really, you know, grateful for the course. Um, you got, to, you, got to, you got to learn how to engage your audiences a little bit more. Exactly, yes. Yeah, what was the reaction prior? Were people just kind of sitting quietly or you didn't I actually know? didn't know because I never ah. actually knew any yeah. reaction before. Yeah. I was sort of going on my own, you know. Um, and, and, and here it allowed me to, also it allowed me to be very present because mm -hmm. I would, for example, just look at the person who invited me to speak and she was in the first row and kind of notice like she would show me like, okay, let's you know, take two more questions in the Q&A, let's wrap it up later. And I could look at her and notice and communicate with her, you know, very naturally. Um, and uh, that would not disrupt um, you know, my speech and it mm -hmm. was just low together. And as, um, as a result of me getting confident to speak and also seeing value and like, I will reiterate back. So probably for me at the moment, right? At the moment, from what I got from the course is this ability to prepare the speech and just know what to do um, step by step rather than, okay, oh my God, no, should I speak to people about it? Should I do that? Should I do this? Um, I, I, I put in a Trello a few cards and a few checklists so, of things to think about, things to note down. Um, and I used it to prepare my keynote speech. And I actually called, I asked um, the organizer to put me in touch with three people from the audience who will be coming. And I had a 15 minute conversations with each of them, asking them, hey, you know, what, what are your feelings right now? What makes you anxious? What questions do you have about the year that is coming in your studies? Uh, what would you want to know about what happens later? Um, if you had a person like me come to you speak, which I will, um, what kind of experiences and challenges would you want uh, to find out how we resolve? And that ended up being very helpful to like understand in their own language uh, what's actually um, you know, on top of their mind and then yeah. address speech. Yeah, so you did, a, you did a really good job of figuring out your ideal audience and what were their concerns, and then you could tailor your talk to their needs as well. Well, that's fantastic. And so that's a very valuable skill that you learned and have started practicing. And how does that make you feel now that you've learned that and have started implementing it? It makes me feel very relaxed and mm -hmm. just enjoy the experience a lot. And how do you think um, throughout the course, you know, I know you, you were very good about coming to office hours and meeting with Karen and myself. Did you find any of that valuable? How do you think that that was um, more valuable, say, than um, just hiring your own speaking coach or something like that? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for responding to all the messages and emails. Oh, sure. Because, um, you know, I would like, in the beginning, of course, I would like put together like a three page email saying, okay, I'm Alex, here is what my background, here is what, what I want to learn, here is why, um, here is things I'm like considering, for example, I can speak on this topic, so that topics are like this because they're good to me in my current career, like this one's because they're good to me later, and, and you're always responding and, and communicating about this. And the second part, uh, the, the office hour sessions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there were some times when I actually, you know, would join earlier and we would speak actually one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that was really great because um, it really boosted against my confidence. Mm -hmm. The place I'm coming from right now is I'm feeling very, um, very chilled and very easy to talk to pretty much anyone. Uh, I think that we already have a prior relationship. I can, uh, you know, reach out to people I want to work or engage with. Uh, but at the time I was beginning the course, I was not coming from that place. Mm. And um, just, you know, having for a fact that, you know, I can 
talk to you, talk to Karen, who worked in the um, CTO office of Adobe, right? Yeah. International very well known company. And just, you know, having casual conversations, you know, discovering how, you know, you speak, what do you do, being able to reach out. That, I found that quite valuable. That's awesome. And, and I would also encourage everyone who uh, takes the course in the future is uh, really to join in um, mm -hmm. and, and just participate in the office hour sessions. Um, there is uh, typically, at least in my time, there was no particular agenda. There was nothing to do, nothing to turn in. Um, it's just a great place to um, speak out whatever is on your mind and, and, and get some support and guidance. So that's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alex. This has been great. I appreciate your time. And I'm so happy to hear that the course has helped you and you're doing lots of speaking and inspiring the next generation of techies as well out there. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. And I look forward to us working together in the future as well. And thank learning you. Uh, let me just say something because I want to yeah. say something about sure. it. Um, so, um, so here is the, the book. Do, do you see it in the picture? Yeah. yeah so I the book that Purnima just sent me um, about a week ago, and it already arrived here in Madrid. Um, it's called Present the Techies Guide to Public Speaking. Um, and the amazing thing is um, um, that you know participating in the content communicator course is a is more than just you know that experience that you have throughout the few weeks. Uh, first of all, because you have access to it uh, forever. Uh, and second, uh, because through the office hour sessions and emails and calls with Purnima and Karen, you get to build the relationship with them. So you can you know, reach out to them and based on their availability, they'll help you out with whatever you're dealing in speaking. Um, and you also get like presents like this sometimes, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. It's very reassuring. Um, and it's, I would say it's a great um, auxiliary material. Mm -hmm. um, for, for the course, because um, um, you can just refer to, to it and, and see different you know, things to do to prepare a speech. You can take it with you. Um, at the same time, uh, throughout the course, the, the great thing is that you can demonstrate the mm -hmm. specific ways to speak, um, voice, uh, gestures, and other things that you cannot see in the book. Right. It's in the material. So I would uh, recommend people have a look at the both. Awesome. Thank you. That was really nice for you to say that.